Hey, feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed. Alrighty, let's take a look at our homework for lesson 6.1.4. Uh, starting off with this uh, set of transformations, it says uh, sketch the graph with the right on your paper and then write directions to translate, that's the slide, the original triangle here into the new triangle here. So in order to do this, it really, you know, all you have to do is focus on one set of corresponding points, the vertices here or here and here or there and there, but I'm going to choose this one. So this is where x is equal to negative 3 and y is equal to 1. And after translation, we have a new set of uh, coordinates for this point, which is at negative 2. No, it's not. It's at negative 1, negative 2. Negative 1, negative 2. So to determine the set of directions to get from the original to the new, just look at the coordinates. It looks like this increased by 2, so it must have been plus 1, plus 2. Uh, we would write that as x plus 2, which means it's moving two units to the right. And this was at positive 1, and it went down to 1, 2, negative 2, so it went down three units. So that's going to be where the y value went down by 3, which means it went down by 3. So these would be the word directions to describe this translation. This would be the coordinate notation to describe that translation. Then it says, what are the coordinates of the new vertices? Well, here's your negative 1, negative 2. Here's your 0, 0. And here's your negative one zero. And then it says on your graph, reflect the original, this one, over the y-axis. So the y-axis is going to be our line of reflection. And at this point, it's going to take one, two, three to get there. So it's going to go one, two, three to cross. This one's going to take three to get there. So three to cross. It's going to put it here. This one takes two to get there. So two to cross puts us there. And so this ends up being the reflection over the y-axis or where x is equal to zero. And this, by the way, is 0.30. This is at 3, 3. And this point here is at 2, 3. Did I say 3, 0? I meant 3, 1. It's not a 0. It's crazy talk. 3, 1. There we go. All right, so make a table and graph the following rule, y equals negative 3x plus 1. Okay, so remember, we're just going to make up values for x and then go through the order of operations. Triple it, take the opposite of it, and then add 1, right? So a lot of people will just start with, with 0. 0 is the easiest, so you get y-intercept is at 1, and then it's going down by 3, so the next one has to go from 1 to negative 2, then from negative 2 to negative 5, then from negative 5 to negative 8. So down 3, 1 to the right, down 3, 1 to the right, or... 3, 1 to the left, up 3, 1 to the left. So if we continue with this pattern going in this direction, negative 1 is at 4, that's this point right there, and negative 2 would be at 7, which is up here. So this is the graph, this is the table for this given situation, for this rule. Uh, solve the system of equations using the equal values method. Okay, so remember, if A is equal to this and A is equal to that, then this must be equal to that. So once we've got this set up, we're going to solve for B. And once we know what B is, we can figure out what A is and verify that we get the same value for A in each of those equations. So I'm going to add 2 to each side, so it becomes 14B. And I'm going to take away 3 from each side, so it becomes negative 7. Now, a lot of people in this uh, situation think the answer is going to be uh, negative 2, right? It's negative 2 times 7 is positive 14, or times, yeah, times negative 7 is positive 14. But if you don't show these steps, and you just do that mentally, that's where you would tend to make that mistake. But if you actually show the steps, you'll see, oh, the answer is not negative 2, it's actually negative 1 half, because negative 7 over 14 is the opposite of 7 over 14, which is the opposite of 1 half. So that's your value for B. So if that is, in fact, the value for B at the solution to the system of equations at the intersection point for these two graphs. And when we plug in B here and B here, we will get the same answer here for A. So what is half of 12? It is 6. And it's, we're supposed to take the opposite of the half of 12. So 
So that would be negative six plus three gives us negative three for an answer. That's what we got here. And then we'll do the same thing here. The opposite of the half of negative two would be positive one, right? Because it's gonna be a negative times a negative is a positive and half of two is one. So it becomes B, or I'm sorry, <laughs> not B. Uh, that would be uh, one minus four is equal to negative three as well. So we got the same values for A when B was equal to negative one half. That proves to be the solution to the system right there. And what do we have here? Mrs. Kai's class is studying a tile pattern. The rule for the tile pattern is y equals 10x minus 18. Khalil thinks that figure 12 of this pattern has 108 tiles. Is he correct? Well, uh, I guess no. The answer is no, because if you plug in 12 here, you get 120 minus 18 is 102. It is not 108. Um, so yeah, that doesn't work. Um, 102 would be the number of tiles in the 12th figure. And then what do we have here? Angel's picking mountain berries for a delicious pie. She can pick one-sixth of a cup of blueberries in two minutes. So one-sixth of a cup is equivalent to two minutes worth of time. So two-sixths would be four, three-sixths would be six. And so if I multiply this times six, and this times six, we would get one full cup, right? Six, six, one full cup would have to be equal to two times six, which is 12 minutes. So that is going to be a lot easier to work with with proportional reasoning than working with that. Okay, so if she needs two and a half cups, okay, well, let's just keep going with this. If one cup is 12 minutes, two cups would have to be twice that amount, which would be 24 minutes. And another half of a cup would be half of that. So a half of a cup would have to be six minutes. So when we combine the two cups and the half of a cup, we're going to combine the 24 minutes and the six minutes, plus a total of 30 minutes. So that's just using logical reasoning. Um, you could also just set it up this way. One sixth of a cup in two minutes, right, would be equal to two and a half cups in how many minutes? So if I multiply these guys together, you get five is equal to one sixth of x. And now to solve, uh, one sixth, let's just do fraction busters and now multiply everything times six and we get 30 is equal to one x. Same answer that we got there, just different ways that you can approach the problem. And our last one, I think that's our last. Yes, our last problem. Juan thinks the graph of 6y plus 12x is equal to 4 is a line. It should be a line, right? Uh, I mean, it is a two-variable function or equation that would be considered a linear equation. Um, so is this linear? Yeah, it is, because when you solve for y, you get it in slope-intercept form, which is a growth rate of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 2 thirds. I guess the question becomes, when we get into, I think, chapter 8, yeah, it's your early chapter 8 or early chapter 9, we're going to talk about exponential growth and nonlinear kinds of functions. And what you'll find is, anytime you've got a rule where you've got x to the first power, it's always going to be linear. If we end up with a, a different power, like x to the second power or x to the third power, that's where you're going to start having these kind of curving situations. So yes, anything where your variables are are power, it's always going to form a straight line. And uh, what do we have more to say here? Uh, what are the growth factor? Well, the growth factor is negative two, and the y-intercept would be where uh, x is zero, y will be two thirds. All right, so that concludes our homework for 6.1.4. Uh, let's move on. I believe we probably have a study guide to move on to because we're going to get ready to take the first chapter test of chapter six. So let's move on. Here. Hey, feeling good.